Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual Liturgy of the Word here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Wailuku, Maui. My name is Moki Hino, and I am your priest in charge. And I'm Peter Lee, your senior warden. And first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone. We're now back in the church. We are being able to worship in our sanctuary. And also, please tune in to our daily Lenten Reflections they start at 6 a.m. and they run all day, and it's been really quite a joy to listen and watch them. Today is uh, Sunday, March 13th, 2022. This is the second Sunday of Lent, and uh, please know that I am in our uh, Lenten array here at Good Shepherd Church. It's a beautiful blood red set. Uh, with the, the altar frontal and this gorgeous stole. The only problem is that when I step behind the altar, you only see from here up, so you don't see this beautiful part of the stole. But please know that I am wearing it and that I am not presiding in white. Uh, somebody asked me if I was doing Easter colors for Lent, and the answer is no. It's just the way that the stole is designed. So just a, a minor uh, note there for all of you. Uh, we will begin this morning's service with the ringing of the bell.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be great. But Ab Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me for I continue childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, you have given me no offspring, and to a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all this and cut them in two, laying its half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day of the Lord, made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land from the river of Egypt to the greater river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. 
For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper, cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me a level path because of my enemies. Deliver me not into the hand of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me and all those who speak malice. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Oh, tarry and await the Lord's pressure be strong and shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. Second reading from the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join me in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is not, and it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory but the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, listen, I'm casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you weren't willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Though my soul may set in darkness, it may rise in perfect light, for I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. I think of that poem every single time I look up at the stars above Mauna Kea back home on Hawaii Island. It's a poem called From the Astronomer to His Pupil. But I, I love the notion of I have loved the stars because the stars are so numerous. The stars are so beautiful. The stars are so extravagant. And in the story of Abraham today, they represent God's generosity toward Abraham, an old, old, old man who is worried that he's going to have to sleep with his slave or his wife's slave in order to produce an heir. He feels like he's running out of time, and yet God promises, look up into the night sky and see the stars, so shall your descendants be. And he can't believe it. He questions it. He wants to know how it's going to happen. Uh, and maybe he gets a bad rap for that, but we have to bear in mind that um, he didn't follow God blindly. He followed God after he got all the information that he needed in order to follow God. And yet he still stepped out in faith, um, really not knowing uh, how uh, generous and extravagant God was going to be with him. Then we fast forward uh, to the story of Jesus. Uh, where the Pharisees come and they tell me, hey, you know, you better get out of here because Herod's going to try and kill you. And uh, Jesus says to them, tell that fox that I'm not leaving Jerusalem uh, because prophets are not killed outside of Jerusalem. They're not stoned outside of Jerusalem. They don't die outside of Jerusalem. And you can try to kill me. Uh, but you are not going to prevail. Your predecessor tried to kill me when I was a child with the slaughter of the holy innocents. He did not prevail. You're not going to prevail. You fox, you sly, cunning, conniving, unprincipled thing, you. Uh, he wants the Pharisees to tell that to Herod, but maybe he's telling it to the Pharisees who are probably trying to save him, not because they're concerned about him, but they're concerned about political gain. If they can get rid of him and drive him out of town, they can go to Herod and say, see, your majesty, look what we did for you. Aren't we wonderful? Um, and, then, and then on top of that, uh, he says to uh, Jerusalem, people like the Pharisees who have, have bought into political excesses and extravagances and... Uh, turn Jerusalem rather hedonistic in Jesus' mind. Uh, he's saying that he longs to gather them like a hen. A hen gathers her brood under her wings. Why did he choose a hen? Well, he knows that foxes go after hens for one thing. He also knows that the symbol of power uh, in the Roman Empire is the eagle. So, um, you know, Rather than using the majestic eagle as uh, an image of salvation, he uses a hen, a chicken, 
uh, which means a lot of people at Good Shepherd are going to be saved because we have a lot of chickens. Uh, they, 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 he wants to gather them under his wings uh, like the hen does, bearing in mind that when hens do that, like they do on the property at Good Shepherd, we've seen it many, many times, um, that doesn't mean that there are no longer mongooses out there that can eat the baby chicks, feral cats out there that can eat the baby chicks, uh, dogs like Blake that can go out there and eat the baby chicks, but um, in the sanctuary of the mother uh, under all that fluff, um, they're safe and they're, they're protected. Um, having said that, there is a real contrast between these two stories. Um, both Abraham and Jesus are on difficult journeys, and they're difficult for Abraham because Abraham doesn't know what's going to happen, doesn't know how it's going to unfold. It's difficult for Jesus because he does know what's going to happen. He does know how it's going to unfold, and in spite of that, he's still desperate to gather all of us under his wing and he will stay in Jerusalem and he will go to the cross if that's what it takes to live into his call. So in this life do you want to be Abraham? Do you want to be Jesus? Do you want to know what's going to happen? Do you want not to know what's going to happen? Uh, I don't think there's any right or wrong answers so I'll leave that to you. But I would like us all to consider um, that notion of how desperate Jesus is to gather us under his wings. Uh, and how desperate are you and I to gather God's people under our wings this Lent? Uh, how des desperate are we to pay whatever price we have to pay to live into God's call? Uh, I think right now, uh, God's call is for us to stay connected with the suffering Christ that we see in the countenance on the faces of the people in Ukraine. Uh, and we're not asked to pay a very high price right now. Uh, the price we're asked to pay is increased gasoline prices at the pump, uh, increased prices uh, for airfares, increased prices for groceries because it's going to cost more uh, to ship them here. What sacrifices are the people of Ukraine making to live into their call to be free and to be peaceful? Um, loss of home, loss of life, separation from families, bombing of maternity hospitals, bombs that suck the air out of your lungs, those, that's the price that the uh, Ukrainians are willing to pay this Lent. What price are you and I willing to pay to stay connected to it all? And how is this going to all turn out? Um, maybe some of us know, maybe some of us don't know, but we, we can bear in mind that God is generous to all God's people and he gives Abraham the stars uh, of the night, so numerous shall his descendants be. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I invite us all to step out in faith uh, the way Abraham stepped out in faith and to bear in mind the words of the astronomer to his pupil, though my soul may set in darkness, May it rise in perfect light, for I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. We affirm our faith by saying together, We, we believe, believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and, and the, the life, life of, of the, the world, world to come. come. Amen. And now we will pray the prayers of the people. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault, at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Bob, our bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, especially Melchior our priest, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one, as you the Father, and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the Church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not believe yet, who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Joseph, our president, David, our governor, Gil, our senator, and Mike, our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and for the forgiveness of our sins and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, remembering especially this week, Alfredo Basig, Herman and Daya, Herman and Daya Sr., Orlando de la Cruz, Milan Evangelista, Rina May Coons, and Florence Parkhurst, and those who faith whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, all the saints they may re have rest in the place where there is no pain or grief, but eternal, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. 
Lord have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever blessed Virgin Mary, King Kamehameha IV, and Queen Emma, Queen Liliuokalani, Damian and Marianne of Molokai, Gregory the Great, Bishop and Theologian, James Theodore Holly, Bishop, Vincent de Paul, Priest, and Louis de Marillac, Monastic, Patrick of Ireland, Cyril of Jerusalem, Bishop and Theologian, Joseph, Guardian of our Lord, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through jesus christ our lord amen amen and let us confess our sins against god and our neighbor most merciful god we confess that we have sinned against you in thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the holy spirit keep you in eternal life amen. amen and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our, our father, father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this your family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hey. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.